A portrait clearly does wonders for the sitter. It's the first thing their future employer or their clients or a potential investor will see. And it's literally the first impression people have of them. And it can make or break their next steps. But the sitter isn't the only person benefiting from the portrait. In the hour or two that a session takes, there's also an upside for the person behind the camera. I give a lot of myself when I'm taking pictures, but I realize and appreciate that at the same time I'm receiving. What do we get out of it? Well, that's what this video is about. We get the valuable gifts of connection, confidence, and wisdom. Portraits are about people. The more we make, the more we're connected to the community we live in. I started taking portraits as a way to break out of my bubble, full of people who looked and acted just like me. I live in a huge city, and I wanted to see that big, diverse mosaic of people, not just one of the tiny tiles within it. When I was starting out, the task was to connect with the most interesting people I could find and take pictures of them. Instagram was a great tool for that, especially if the subject had a really low quality profile picture of themselves, because then I could give them something really valuable in exchange for their time. And of course, the very best pictures were a great way to build my portfolio early on. So I left my middle of the road bubble and found myself in parts of town I'd never been to before. The fancy apartments full of art, the community centers in neighborhoods that needed a bit more attention, I found wonderful people everywhere I looked. Some of the very first people I took pictures of were DeLorean owners. A number of owners agreed for me to take pictures of them and it was brilliant because each of them had their own reasons for buying the car and driving it around. One guy owned a retro 80s arcade just north of the city and he parked his DeLorean outside because he knew people walking past had stopped to look at it. Another would bring his DeLorean to car shows and of course he'd have a bunch of back to the future memorabilia on the seats. That was the first time I'd cold contacted people that I didn't know and I was terrified. But it was great practice and now it's second nature. And my conversation skills during a shoot are way better now than they were before I started taking portraits. If it weren't for portraits, I'd never have found myself in a pool with an Olympic swimmer or have a symphony bassist playing my living room without a camera. I'd never have the chance to spend time with a break dancer or a soloist from the ballet. If you take lots of pictures, then by definition, you meet a lot of people. It gets harder to be narrow-minded when you're exposed to so many experiences. This is especially true of the poets and artists I've met. They're trying to make sense of their past and present environment with a hope to influence the future. It made me realize that science and art are not in two separate worlds after all. We're all trying to understand what's happening around us. It's amazing who you can have a cup of tea with when you give them a portrait in return. Those connections would have never happened without a camera. I got hooked on portrait photography, not just because of the people that I got to meet, but because it brings out part of my personality that I really like. By day, I was a mild-mannered scientist, never quite sure of myself and it really showed. But in the evening behind the camera, I came out of my shell into someone completely different. Sometimes you're in a season in life where your self-esteem takes a hit. I remember a few years back going through a long period of feeling miserable at my day job. And the solution that I found, in the short term at least, was to make sure that life outside of work made up for it. With every session, my confidence grew. And I say confidence, but we could be talking about ego or self-esteem. All of these were bolstered every time I took photographs. And don't get me wrong, people photography is tough work and things can go wrong, but it's such a different type of work than I was used to. Knowing you're directly helping someone out, making images you're proud of, and the satisfaction of learning new skills and solving new problems. A lot of people think photography is all about technology, but it really isn't. It's psychology, communication, it's observation and reaction. To get a good picture, we have to do things that I've never seen on a job description before. Get someone comfortable, make someone laugh, have them leave your room feeling more confident in themselves than when they walked in. It makes me feel awesome. It puts me in a better mood 
And it consequently makes me a more tolerable person to be around in other parts of my life too. You can't make someone else feel confident if you're not confident yourself. Even if all you have is a shaky scrap of confidence to begin with, you've got to slap yourself into shape for your sitter so that the sitter loves how they've been treated. Solid portraits don't come from skin deep compliments. It needs to be from a place of genuine understanding and respect. When it's done right, everyone leaves the session feeling like a million dollars and that's the confidence we all need. I've learned that for me, wisdom's knowing when to shut up and listen to other people's wisdom. When I'm talking too much, I'm guaranteed to say the wrong thing at the wrong time. Everyone's got a story to tell, and during a photography session, I get to spend an hour or two listening to those stories. Getting people talking is a way to get them relaxed for pictures, but I'm really listening to what they have to say. I'm soaking it up. I've learned something from everyone who stood in front of my camera without exception. And it didn't matter who they were or what they did. I've had art collectors and opera singers, architects and accountants, and people starting new and exciting companies from scratch. I get a brief glimpse into their work and what's driving them to succeed, what mistakes they've made and how they've learned from them. Everyone's had successes and everyone's had struggles, but in different ways. I photograph people at the beginning of new relationships and some who are finding new paths after ending troubled ones. I've talked to people becoming heads of their department and people looking for second jobs to keep their families fed. One of the problems of still portraits is that the viewer doesn't get to hear the conversation we had when I pressed the shutter button. I try and get some of the emotion to show through the picture, but where's the personal interaction? Well, that's just for us. After the session's over, I reflect on what happened and what I've learned, and I'm thankful for being in the right place at the right time. Connection with confidence and openness to learning from spending time with lots of different people doing very different things. That's why I take portraits. It's selfish because I'm the one who probably benefits from it the most. Let me know in the comments below how you benefit from the portraits that you make and what you've learned along the way.